Of course, when I moved the, the phone, I disconnected us. So that's just great. Now this video will be in two parts. Bear with me a minute, guys. Technology can be a real pain in the butt. For those of us who are challenged. <laughs> okay. All right, so that kind of wipes out. Um, yeah, we're back. Uh, yeah, I disconnected us um, when I moved the camera. So, sorry about that. I hope to get everybody else back. I'll wait just a second. Hopefully, hopefully everyone will um, figure out what happened and come back in. Okay. All right. Sorry for the bad start. All right, Marianne, you were asking uh, about the jump ring tool. Um, it's it's a system. I'm gonna I'm gonna move this again. Uh, it's a system that I got from Potter USA. Uh, Peppy Tools makes them as well. This is an old version. I've had this for quite some time, so it's kind of old, but the function is the same. Uh, there's two parts of it. There is a wire winder here, and you pick out the size mandrel that you want. Say if you want um, four millimeter jump rings, the, these are all numbered here on the bottom. They're hard to see, but they're numbered. This is the mandrel for a more uh, four millimeter uh, jump ring. So you would put this in the wire winder, tighten it up. This would be clamped to the table. And then I would insert my wire in here and then wind it all the way around till I get a whole long coil of jump rings. Once the coil is made, you take it out and then you would put the coil in this little gizmo here. It's got like a little trough in here that's kind of drilled out. It's This one came with only this size side. This is the standard cutting side, but um, my daughter had a friend who was living in the area uh, a while back, and he is a machinist, and he cut this out uh, for me so I can make bigger jump rings uh, on that side. Unfortunately, he moved far away, so um, I can't utilize his talents anymore. But anyway, you put the coil in here, and then you cover it with this top, screw it down, First of all, before you put your coil in, you're going to run some um, cut lube on it, some lubrication on there, and then cover this up. And then there's a blade that goes in your handpiece in the Fordham, and you put this hood thing over it first. This isn't the Fordham here, but... Just for an example, you put this in first and then put your blade on. You screw your blade on in, in the Fordham and then you pull this up. So this sits inside of this little window here. This is just for your protection, this here. And then you take this whole thing and put the blade in the, in the guide here and then run your handpiece across and all your jump rings are cut that way. So I hope that answers uh, your question, Marianne. I mean, this is just a real not thought out um, thing, but just to answer your question, that is what I use to make my jump rings. It's very handy because it has so many different sizes of mandrels you can make all different kinds of uh, sizes of jump rings and have them all available for when you need them or you just make them as you need them i tend to like to have a lot of different uh, size varieties on hand for other projects too okay 
All right. So back to this. All right. So um, I was starting to open up some jump rings. And I, like I said, I had already pre-opened a bunch because I didn't think you'd want to sit here for a half an hour and watch me open jump rings. That is uh, beyond boring. No, oh, that's that really good closed one. All right. Hi, Dawn. Okay, so when you're starting out, well, I don't know what I did with my little twist tie. There it is. All right, so I just have like a twist tie from a bread wrapper or something similar. And I just use this in the beginning of uh, making my chain uh, just for something just for something to hold on to the chain a little bit better. So I'm going to start with two closed jump rings. So just two closed really well and insert them in my twist tie. twist it closed a little bit. Just something to hold on to. You could use a piece of wire as well if you wanted to. All right, so to those two closed jump rings, I'm going to add two jump rings. That's number one. And number two. So I have, that's why it's called the two and two. There's two jump rings. It's all, that's the only weave. It's not really a weave, I don't think, but I guess you could call it that. Uh, we're going to do that for um, the entire bracelet. So to those two, I'm going to add another two. Make sure you close them nice and tight and evenly because you don't want any scratchiness. So I'm going to do four sets of twos. Okay, I'm going to do four sets of twos, and I'm going to set that down. Then I'm going to take the larger jump rings. Let me come down here a little bit more. I'm going to take the larger jump rings, and I'm going to take, I'm going to put one, close one up, and then put another one inside this one. This is to make the rosette. So I have two hooked together right there. Now I'm going to take a third jump ring and I'm going to put it, I'm going to place that jump ring right here in the middle of where these are joined in this section right here. Well, that slipped away from me, so let me reposition that. This is as complicated as it gets, which is not very. All right, so then you've got your three, and then you just kind of smush them together a little bit, and that forms your rosette, which is pretty easy. Easy enough. So then I'm going to take another jump ring, another four millimeter, and pick up my little rosette and 
pass it through and close it up and then take another jump ring because we're always working in twos on the chain except for the rosettes those are three and make sure you grab all three rings that all three rings go through the four millimeter jump ring okay all right and now actually what I should have done is I need to have a double row here so I'll just leave that at that for right now but I'll start making the double row on this next one so I'm going to put a four millimeter jump ring through the opposite end of the rosette close that up Put two into that one. Close that up. See, if you have these opened already, you can just grab them. You don't have to stop to open them. It's just a pain to, to open them up, but you'll be happy you did once you start working. I'll do this little section and then um, I'll stop and explain that again. I'm just putting two jump rings into two jump rings, closing them tightly and adding two more. And I'm going to do four sets of twos. Which is right here. And then I'm going to start back right below the, or right into the jump ring, or to the rosette, I'm sorry, and add another. This is going to be my double row here. I know it's probably hard for you to see what I'm doing. Um, I, I just can't get the close-ups that would be nice to have. Oh, putting that on the wrong ring. i got to take that other one off. See, I was yapping and not paying attention. Take that one off because that one's already complete. Put that on the other side here. This is also beautiful in sterling. If you wanted to do it in silver, um, it makes a really nice substantial bracelet. It's also nice to be working with good pliers uh, when you do chain mail to prevent a lot of hand fatigue. All right, so I've got my two my two rows here. That's the double row, and I will add another one here, not to confuse you here. But once you've got your four on, you can go ahead and make another rosette which is two jump rings one jump ring in the other and then you take a third open jump ring and you're going to place it right 
in the middle here between these two jump rings. That way it will lay properly if it's picked up that way. Isn't that cute? Just very simple. Little rosette there. All right, so now I'm going to connect this to this by picking up a four millimeter jump ring, going through the last two, and going through all three of the rosette rings. And we're always working in twos on the main part of the chain. So I've got that little section hooked up. Now I'm going to hook up this side. So I'll go through those last two. Make sure that you have all three links of the rosette caught in there. And if your jump ring is not open wide enough to get uh, all three of them, you need to open it up a little bit further. There, I got. Oh, I missed my. I missed where I was here. You have to go through those last two. I'm gonna open this a little bit wider. Okay, so there is one section right there. And then we're just going to build and keep building on this. I'll do uh, another section, and then I've already made a few of these little sections ahead of time just to speed up this process for the demo. All right. So put these on here. I should have probably done this one in silver, but I had these already made and uh, I didn't have enough silver rings and I just honestly didn't feel like cutting them this morning. So that's my reason. But um, chain mail, especially something like this, uh, it, this pattern is very simple. You can do this anywhere. Um, I know I've said it before, uh, but you could take this on a plane. You could uh, sit on, you know, have this sit on your lap in the evening when you're watching TV. Of course, you have to pay attention to what you're doing, um, but I like to have projects that I can sit uh, and, and work on while I'm relaxing, and um, my husband likes to watch TV in the evenings, and uh, I don't mind having it on. I don't pay attention to it a whole lot, but um, it's just nice to have something to keep my hands busy so I'm not eating all the time. Because <laughs> that can be an issue. The evening is my my downfall for that. I can pretty much go all day without much of anything to munch on. But come evening time, relaxing, I'm in my jammies, sitting in my easy chair, and... Nice to have something to munch on. Hey, 
Hey, Wendy. Oh, my. Well, I hope your husband's okay. That was probably... Uh, I don't know how far away you are from Buffalo, but uh, that's nice that you're able to do that. Hope everything will be okay. All right. So where are we at here? It's quiet again. My husband went to get my grandson from school. And so it's very, very peaceful around here right now. All right, so I've got my four sets of two on here. And I'm ready for another rosette. Hi, Carolyn. Yep, I'm doing fine. Thank you. So I've got my two seven millimeters hooked together here. And I'm going to pass the third in the center of those two. All right. So that's all three. You just kind of move them around a little bit till they sit the right way. And then take another set of two to connect that rosette to the rest of the chain. It's a nice sunny day out here. I don't know uh, about your part of the country, but um, it's nice to see the sun shining. We've had a couple of gloomy days lately. But the promise of spring is in the air. My friend Deb that lives in Chicago um, has started a bunch of um, seedlings for our beading group. She did that last year and it was wonderful. Um, she grew a, a, a bunch of varieties of tomatoes and, um, and other things, but we were mainly interested in the tomatoes. And this year she's gotten a ton, a ton more seedling, seeds, and uh, we're going to have a feast of tomatoes. And I believe... She got peppers as well, a bunch of varieties of peppers. So um, that's always a fun time in the spring. I, I, while I'm talking here, I um, earlier when I put these little links together, I, I did a series of five instead of four that I just noticed. So I took off two because I need to connect two to the rosette. Those are the little, these are the little pre-made sections that I made just to kind of speed up the, uh, the demo a little bit. But getting back to the tomatoes, I'm very, uh, excited to get those. She grew so many different varieties last year and uh, I had never tried the Cherokee purple I think that's what it's called or purple Cherokee I'm not sure which way that goes but um, they uh, are an heirloom tomato and they're just they're just delicious they're not really purple they're kind of a strange dark red um, different than anything I've seen before but um, very nice. So I'm looking forward to those again this year. San Marzano's, I have planted those before, Marianne. They're wonderful for um, 
tomato sauce or to make tomato paste. Uh, but I don't know. It, I haven't had real good luck with them the last few years. Um, I, I'm not really sure why, but um, I have these planter boxes that I have been putting my uh, stuff in. And I don't know if, if they're not happy with those or I think they're better in the ground than in the pots. So that's just a guess. I, I really can't say that for certain. I'm screwing up because I'm talking. <laughs> but I love them for cooking. They're a wonderful meaty tomato. I did this to save time and it looks like I'm wasting more time trying to fix these. Anybody else garden out there? Oh, duh. I got to make my little, my little rosette. There's the two hooked together. And put that in the middle. And close that up. And now, this set that I just put on here for nothing. I open that up and oh, I dropped it. Make sure it's oriented the right way. I didn't close this one very well. You want to close your jump rings as as best you can so that you don't uh, have like little uneven pieces of wire jabbing at you or hooking on your cloth, clothing. Okay, so I've got four on this other. And I'll hook two onto there and hook that onto the rosette. It actually goes fairly fast. There are some very difficult, um, intricate chainmail patterns um, that I haven't done too many intricate ones. I've done some, but I think it would be too difficult to try to um, do that on a demo. I'm not really sure if you could really see exactly what I'm doing um, without being in person. That's the good thing about it an in-person class is that you're there to to help when somebody is not quite understanding or can't really see it and um, it's so much easier to help in that situation. Up a little bit more. I think um, I've been thinking about next week and what I'm going to do for a demo, and I'm thinking I may do something with glass, um, some little simple um, glass flowers on copper wire, but I'm going to um, maybe play with that idea tomorrow um, after I would do it after the demo today, but Max will be here, so um, that, that's not going to happen when Max is here. So, um, and I think I mentioned he wants to do the challenge. 
<laughs> so, um, oh, I forgot I made this other big section here to connect to. I guess I'm going to have to take some of this off because that's going to be like a huge bracelet. But this will save time to put these on here. So there should be five sets of twos between rosettes, okay, so that they lay right. Um, I would say it's going to, you know, if you wanted to make them longer between uh, rosettes, you'd have to do them in odd numbers so that they lay right. All right, so let me get this hooked together and then I'll take apart what I don't need at the other end of this. That shortens the um, the monotony. And then what I'll do is I'll make the clasp and solder a um, seven millimeter jump ring closed so that we can use that for the opposite end of the clasp. And then it'll all be put together. Yeah, I was just working away here, not thinking about that piece that I had already made earlier to, uh, to help out here. How long would the bracelet be with five sections plus the clasp? Well, that depends on how long you need it to be. Um, I can show you for myself. Um, this this fits me. This one that's already done has it fits me. And let's measure this from tip to tip. It is eight inches. That's with the hook opened up. Okay. And that has, well, I have a little shorter section on one end here. I had to, to shorten it a little bit so that it fit right, which you can do. But from rosette to rosette, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rosettes in my bracelet. That fits me. Now this one, because I was yakking, um... I have more on here than I need. So what I'll do is take off I'll use this section here for the hook and then all I have to do is just take off this section here at the end and we should be good. If you guys like doing chain mail um, and, and you have a flex shaft already, I would seriously consider getting the um, the jump ring attachment thingy because um, you will save a lot of money in the long run. In the initial investment is always a lot in, in just about anything. But if it's stuff that you're going to use a lot, um, it, it pays for itself uh, very quickly. A lot of times you can't find the right sizes online of things that you need. And this way you can make them uh, just exactly what you need. All right, so let's see here. All right, so I'm going to say that's pretty much done on that end. And, oh, I didn't close this one very well. That's the other thing is you should inspect your work as you go along to make sure that you're closing everything properly. Uh, see, now, I, like I said before, I used 8 millimeter, 18 gauge uh for the rosettes on this bracelet and I like 
the tightness of the 16 gauge and the um, 7 millimeter jump rings. All right, so on this end, I can take off my twist tie. I could have taken that off a long time ago. And um, to have this lay right, I am going to take off these last two jump rings. Because if you don't, then your, um, oh, wait a minute. Then your clasp part doesn't lay right. All right, so I've got that, that, and that. I'm taking two sections off. Okay, all right. So then I'll make the clasp and we'll do the um, closed jump ring. Move this up again. Move this out of the way. And I'm going to use um, 18 gauge, I'm sorry, 14 gauge wire for my clasp. And for the long, I'm using uh, long round nose pliers that have steel wool all over them. It's like magnetic. So for the long round, round nose pliers, I'm using two and a quarter inches of wire. So. Stuff's flying all over. So flush cut this piece. And get my bench block and chasing hammer. And I'm going to just flatten this very tip of this wire here. going to get a standard round nose pliers and just bend this around make like a little P a little P shape straighten that out a little bit then I'm going to Put the P-shape facing away from me and all the way to the back of the pliers like that. And then I'm going to push this wire up and over and to touch the back of the little P and then pull that out and you get your little shepherd's hook right there. And then turn the shepherd's hook upside down with the hook towards me and all the way to the back of the plier again with the tip of the wire just barely showing and roll this away from me. You have to do it in two different rolls, in two rolls I should say. And then you have a little half S hook or shepherd's hook or I'm not really sure what you call these things. Little clasp. And then I'm going to take my chasing hammer and I'm going to hit the arc of this hook here with the ball peen end of my hammer. And I'm hitting down, but I'm also kind of pulling and stretching the wire out a little bit, which is hard to tell. Okay. 
and that hardens that clasp up and gives it a little bit of shine. So I have the one side for my clasp and now all I need is a eight millimeter jump ring. I'm sorry, seven millimeter jump ring. It's the same ones that I used in the rosettes. And I'm gonna close this nice and tight. Okay, and then this is just a real simple thing for, for one little ring. Where did I put it? Oh, I put it on the bench block. Okay. So I've got that split end facing towards me. I'm going to put a little bit of flux on the ring. Grab a teeny piece of solder. All you need is a tiny piece. And my solder pick. Warm up my ring all the way around. I'm going to grab my solder right here. I think I need to clean my solder pick. Okay. Keep that up and go in for the kill right here. Okay. So. my board. Okay. So now this would go into the pickle just to clean this fire scale off of here. And then I would file um, any rough spots for the inside of the ring. I'll use like a needle file, a round needle file, and clean all that out, you know, if there's any excess on there. And on the outside, actually I could hit it. I could hit it with a file or I could hit it with uh, my micromotor. But it still needs to go in the pickle, okay? So, and then it would be cleaned up. If you have any solder line showing, then you would need to, um, uh, put it in some old pickle to plate it and that will cover that little silver seam that's in there but if you don't use a lot of solder you won't have a lot of cleanup so so that's a really good thing all right and of course I made um, a set already that I've cleaned and patinaed and put it on here to put, to connect to this, 
to these rings on the end. So I'll have to open up. And on this way, on this, I need to take off that, um, that last set of twos so that my jump rings are going the right way. Although this might be a little bit short if I do that. Maybe I'll add two on. We'll do that. That way everything's going in the right direction. So put two on this side. that side come back here Well, that's not right. You can tell if stuff's not laying right, uh, you should stop at that point and kind of figure out what's not laying right. This is just what I was not wanting to do. I think I was okay without adding the two. Yeah. No. Sometimes I don't know whether I'm coming or going. It's like it makes sense initially and then it doesn't. I think I just twisted it before. That's the right way. So I was doing it right, but I think I just twisted it. Yep, that looks right. Okay. All right, and on the other end, where I began, I had only put one. Uh, one unit on here, but I think, well, actually, I should make them the same. But that's totally up to you. Okay. Almost done. This actually is a short, shorter demo than most. But I suspect when I do the glass flowers, that might be a little bit longer. Okay, another set here. So I'm working in twos all along. And you know, as it, it, I'm I'm done now basically, but always check your length as you as you feel like you're getting closer to the size that you need. Uh, Remember to check your length periodically. 
All right, so now I'm just going to attach this clasp. Well, I guess I'll just attach it to all four. And the easiest way to do that is just to open this up rather than opening all four jump rings again. Is just open that side up and then just scoop these all up here. There you go. And make sure that your hook is open enough that you can slide your ring through it but yet not too open that you lose your bracelet just enough i've honestly i've made a lot of these i've never lost one uh, it, it's just a matter of finding that right uh, distance to keep them closed open you know the space that you have open here so that's pretty simple. And I like it a lot. Um, it, it is a nice weight. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. It's a nice size. It doesn't fall halfway down my hand. Um, and it doesn't bind me at all. It should have movement. Your, your bracelets should have movement. You should never be... Um, tight on your wrist and especially in the summertime when you get all sweaty and stuff you don't want your jewelry sticking to you so so that's it so you have any questions it's pretty pretty short and sweet but i like it and and like i said before in silver i think it would be even uh even nicer you know, so, so there you go. So now I have two, but I think, I think I'm going to swap these rosettes out in the, um, in the first one that I made. I just think that they look too thin. Um, comparison wise, I think the other one, uh, just looks a little bit nicer. So. If you guys make anything like this, make sure you post it. I'd like to see what you do. Like I said, in the world of chain mail, this is a very simple project. And something's not laying right in this original one here. There's something twisted right here. I can see that. So I'll have to take that apart and I think I've just twisted over a jump ring or so, but I have to open this anyway because I'm going to replace, like I said, these bigger rings here. I don't quite like them. So, thanks, Suni. All right, guys, uh, I guess that's going to be it for today. If you have any questions or comments you want to leave on the group page, feel free. Um... And like I said, I think I'm going to do glass flowers next week uh, on, on uh, pieces of 18 gauge copper. That's at least what I'm thinking about right now. I think that that uh, would be something different. It, you know, not everybody's going to be able to do it, of course, if you don't have lamp working stuff. But uh, sometimes it's just fun to see different processes, you know, and see if there's something else that might pique your interest. And... Uh, and we'll go from there. So, all right, you guys, take care. And uh, thanks for joining me. I always am happy to see you guys here and uh, be with me. So take care. Bye-bye.